Okay, forgot the parsley. Now we're ready to go. Thank you for waiting. We get, are we live? Are we good to go? Excellent. Okay, Wait. welcome again to the outdoor home, stay at home live cooking demonstration. Uh, today we're outside live from our backyard. We've been doing this every day for 30 days. I think we're about halfway through. So uh, super glad to be back doing this again. This is one of my favorite recipes that we're gonna do today. Uh, it is red wine braised short ribs. So I cooked this several times during the year. Uh, it's, it's one of my favorites. So we'll get started. I've got an egg that's already cruising here at about 450 degrees. And we're going to be cooking on the enamel coated Dutch oven again today. We've done this before both in the lid. Today we're just going to be using the bottom portion. So what I want to do is go ahead and get this warming up. Uh, as far as setup, we're just direct grilling and I've got the cast iron grate. Uh, I like the cast iron for this. You can use either grate, but the cast iron does offer a really good heat transfer into the pan because we're going to do some uh, onions and the veggies and stuff in there. So I'm going to go ahead and get that in place and we'll let that start warming up while we uh, light the other egg here. We're going to use the Mini Max for the sear. And you don't have to do this. Uh, normally, just trying to save a little bit of time and then it gives us a chance to show how easy, how fast, easy, and clean it is to uh, light a big green egg. So in this case, I'll do the sear in here. Normally, I would probably just get that fired up, sear off my short ribs in that egg, and then put the uh, pan in and go from there. This gives us a chance to show exactly how easy this process is. So I've got some charcoal in here from the last cook, and I'm just going to place a few of these fire starter sticks, just kind of dig a spot, put it in place. Since I'm going to do a sear across the entire, that's why I'm doing a few of these, just to make sure I've got a large area of coals. You can, you can get by with one as well. And then we just take a lighter. And I'm going to light these little fire starters in here. Love the bird. <laughs> I'm almost starting to think the bird likes these videos every time. It'll be quiet out here until we come out here and start doing this and then he starts singing, so. You had several thumbs up and claps on the recipe. Awesome. awesome. We're using my phone today so we can actually see your questions and comments if you want to throw them out there. I'm kind of like David. I'm easily distracted, so I may or may not answer them at the exact time because I don't want to get too far off track. Uh, you know, squirrel, whatever. We've got plenty of squirrels in our backyard, so <laughs> try and stay on focus, but feel free to ask the questions and I will definitely answer them as I can. So all I'm going to do here, I don't want to get dirty. Just wash my hands. I'm just basically <laughs> pulling some of this charcoal over the top of the fire starter so that we're catching a coal. Bottom draft door has to be open. If you miss that step, it'll take a little longer, which I've done before. I'm going to let that uh, put my grate back on there so it can start warming up. And once those, once I know for a fact those fire starter sticks are going, I'm just going to open the top regulator and shut that and let that get to work. So I think what we'll do, I've got uh, here are short ribs. I'll season these in just a second. Uh, to show you that process, normally I would probably do that ahead of time and let them kind of sit, but I don't know that it's going to make that much difference. So we should be getting hot over here. We'll get started on this portion. And this will be a, uh, this one's going to take a few hours to cook once, once, it, uh, once we let it simmer. So we'll do this like we've done previous classes and do it in two stages and come back live when it's time to uh, to eat dinner, I guess. So we had a late breakfast. We're going to skip lunch and we're going to have an early dinner. So, Okay, I'm going to use about a half a stick of butter. We should probably time. We're about 106 when I lit that, so we'll just see. That, uh, that egg will be ready to sear probably by the time I can get done with this part, and usually 10 minutes or less. It's very, very fast and easy. So I'm going to just start throwing some butter in the bottom of our enamel Dutch oven. One of my favorite things to cook on is this. So easy to clean up. Super low maintenance, so I'm going to melt some of this. closer where you can see. And 
And then lots of ingredients go in uh, this recipe. We're gonna start with, as soon as that gets going, we have uh, a couple chopped white onions. We have carrots, we'll get to, you'll be able to see in the bottom, we've got uh, three carrots, I believe it is. Um, and then we also have celery that's in this as well. I believe they refer to this as the Trinity, in some terms. The butter's just about melted there. <laughs> Comments, questions? Did Dad wants already? no. Dad wants to know if you clean it up or I do. Uh, I think that's a joint effort. <laughs> Much like the preps, it's, I do. A, I do a small portion of the, the cleanup, and honestly, I usually do a very small portion of the prep. It's really not fair because so many of these recipes that we cook. Uh, if we have people over for dinner, I'll kind of get the credit for the recipe if it turns out good, but I really don't do much other than the easy part. So we're going to let that, uh, we're going to let that start warming up and we'll get our ribs going. So for these, you could do this ahead of time. Lots of different options you could season with, but uh, today I'm using the, I'm starting to become a fan of this, Blue's Hog Bold and Beefy. Uh, I've also used the Outdoor Home Steak and Roast Rub does really good. Uh, some different options that you could do there. And I'm gonna hit these, these are brave, these are short ribs, beef short ribs. And to start off, I'm gonna give the, uh, a little rub down with olive oil. This is mainly to give the rub something to stick to. The bird is just singing away. These you've got bone on one side, so you don't have to hit that, but I want to hit all the other. Even the ends are important. These are good looking short ribs. I and mean, when you go to the store and buy these, I think the bigger the better. You want all that meat on there. Sometimes they get really small and you can get some that are that are massive, even bigger than this. I think they call them dinosaur bones, but you don't see those very often. Smells good. Yeah, I love this stuff. <clears throat> Brandon mentioned these are this is really good for burgers. I decided to try it today, but we're gonna try that on the burgers, I think, maybe this upcoming week. Hope you've enjoyed the recipes. I know I have. I can't wait to try uh Aaron's pork chop recipe. I actually was on the video end of that that uh, one last week, and man, I can't wait to try that recipe. Dave had some good ones. Brandon, everybody's been pitching in. Might even try the meatloaf. That, uh, that that was a big hit on the meatloaf. So, and I'm not a meatloaf fan. All right, we're getting a little. Sure and stir those. We're mainly wanting to soften those onions. Our neighbors are going to grill today too. Try and do this whole recipe by memory. Cooked it several times, but there's always months in between, so hopefully I can remember the process on everything here. Again, we're doing this every day, the Outdoor Home Stay at Home Cooking Demonstration Series. 
Uh, we've got other options. The store is closed today. This is Sunday. Uh, but we do have options. You can always come to the store. You can, uh, you can give us a call or go online and place your order there. And we're offering delivery throughout the Springfield metro area. We also have curbside pickup if you want to get out and come to the store but you don't want to get out of your vehicle. We can have that all ready. And I believe we now have a kind of a cool feature that you'll see on the website. You can actually put in your order form uh, on Sunday, Monday, whatever. You maybe see some, some ingredients, some sauce, some seasoning, maybe a new accessory you wanted to check out. You can actually create your, your wish list on our website, send that directly to the store, and they'll get your order ready for delivery or pickup, or, or you can come in and get it. Just because we have to stay home doesn't mean we have to stay inside. So get outside and try something new on the grill, whether it's a big green egg, a pellet grill, a gas grill, offset smoker, anything. Just get out there and cook. We're about six minutes in on the egg there that's starting to take off and then what we're going to do is we're going to sear the uh, we're going to sear those you could also do that in the skillet that's the other method you could actually do it in the skillet remove that then add all the onions and vegetables and everything back to the skillet I figure this will give us a chance to speed up a little bit as well as show how easy it is to light we're starting to look pretty good here we're getting soft on the onions Again, you can see it's onions, carrots, celery. You can add anything else you want to this recipe. We actually uh, have taken the recipe a step further. I add tomatoes, which I don't believe is on the original recipe, and I'm going to, going to add mushrooms. We love mushrooms. So and, and anything you want to add, you certainly can. What temperature are we waiting for on the small egg? Uh, I'm going to sear, so probably five or 600. I just want to have some hot coals. Any temperature. We're mainly just we're not going to cook those there, so it's mainly just to get a little crust on the outside. Uh, recipe temperature for the uh, for the Dutch oven here is 350. It's not 350 right now. Obviously, we're a little bit hotter than that, but that is the temperature that we'll shoot for once we're done. And for those of you watching. Although I guess we've got people maybe watching from all over the U.S., but if you're from around here, or you, uh, you make a trip here or whatever, I do look forward to the day. It's so hard to do this in front of a camera. I cannot wait for the day that we can actually get everybody back together and do cooking classes again and maybe at Egg Fest. You know, it's so much easier to stand in front of a group of people and all your smiling faces as opposed to just looking at a camera. Mushrooms. Those onions are about done. The, the onions are probably done for most people's taste at this point in time, but since I'm not a real big onion fan, I like to make sure they're really good and soft. Yum. And I, since I have a little more butter, I'm going <laughs> to add it. Richard Cook is requesting mac and cheese one day. That would be good. We thought about, uh, we actually talked in the office about the lobster mac and cheese that we did at, uh, I think we did it as a test run at uh, an egg fest a couple years ago, a few years ago at Outdoor Home. And then we ended up going to Atlanta for the big Oktoberfest there and cooked huge amounts of the, uh, that was the 20th anniversary, I believe it was. Uh, in Atlanta, we cooked huge batches of lobster mac and cheese. It was just amazing. So maybe maybe that'll be our grand finale. I guess we get. <laughs> I don't know that one. It's a lot of lobster that goes in that recipe. If you have recipe ideas, keep throwing them at us because we still got. But we have another couple weeks of this at least, so we may need some more. We've got your idea so far. I know burn ends has been mentioned. Brisket's coming up. Uh, I think we've got stir fry coming up some tacos, all kinds of stuff that's been mentioned. We've still, I'm getting down to the end of my recipe list, but we've still got a couple options. Dusty Hurst says he can't wait for Egg Fest in September. And Absolutely. Jonathan is asking if it's salted butter and how much goes in a batch. Um, it's unsalted butter. I always use unsalted butter with the idea I can add salt if I want to, but I can't take it out of the butter. 
Um, it calls, actually the recipe calls for vegetable oil and then we end up substituting. I like butter instead of vegetable oil, but about a half a stick and then I've used a little bit more uh, because I added the mushrooms and wanted a little bit more liquid. And these are braised ribs, so all this that's going in here is going to end up on the plate when we're done. So you can never have too much. That's why I like to put the mushrooms in there. <laughs> Live TV, there's one for the dog, except she's not fast enough. starting to take off on their mini max there. Looking good. Yeah. I think I add the we add tomatoes to our recipe which is not on the original recipe and I think it goes in now, right? Or is it at the very end? Doesn't matter. Yeah, we'll get in there. I'll let these. I'm not sure if it's just a little more. We lost one there. <laughs> okay, that's starting to take off. Once the, uh, with those fire start sticks, it's kind of slow to get to around 300 degrees. And once it gets there, it'll start climbing pretty quick. So we're almost ready. And I did not bring tongs to flip those. I'll be right back. Another good example of why you do this outside. All that mess would be on the, the stove top, the countertop, and I'm just gonna wipe that right off into the, <laughs> into the bushes. Turned out to be pretty nice today. Oh yeah, it was raining this morning. I was committed to doing this, rain or shine. But yeah, it worked out great. Okay, now we're, we're climbing 400 and increasing there. And this recipe is not a lot of work. It may appear that way right now, but the good news with stuff like this, when you do recipes like this, once we get this going, uh, we're going to go inside for three hours. Actually, we're going to probably sit out here for three hours because it is beautiful out. But the work's up front, and then you just kind of wait, and then you have dinner at the end. All right. All right, we're starting to rock and roll here. Got some good hot coals there. Let's brush with that real quick. same time so I'm just gonna take I don't have to sear the bone side which is that side so I just want to hit each of the other sides which there's the bone there Got the thumbs up here <laughs> that smells good so somebody needs to create like smell a vision yeah I do love the Minimax. You can fit much more than people think on there. And it's a traveling egg. These little wheels release here. That all folds up, so you can literally, it would be a great day to go to the park. You could fold that up, throw that in the trunk of the car, put that in the back seat, and take the egg to the park. Take it to the lake. Take it camping. They can't smell it, but Candy points out she can hear the sizzle. <laughs> I think I put this one. Yep, we're cooking. Nope, that's right. 
thought that was bone side. It's hard to tell on that big piece there. About two minutes each side, so six minutes total on that. All right, this is ready for the next step. So what we're gonna do here is add our tomato paste. Two teaspoons of tomato paste. It's or like two tablespoons, tablespoons. I'm sorry. <laughs> I knew it as soon as I said it. <laughs> sorry. And then we're gonna add some flour as well. I'm gonna incorporate that paste a little bit first. Even that smells good. It all smells delicious. Yeah, we're getting smoke from behind from the meat taking off. I think this recipe did actually call to sear the meat in a skillet. Uh, I just prefer to give it a kiss with, with a little flame. Okay, I'm gonna stir in a little bit of flour. I think it's about three tablespoons just to thicken this, brown it a little bit. bottom there. Okay, and this may be hard for some to watch, but this is a full bottle of Cabernet red wine. And every bit of it goes in. You can save a little for yourself, I guess. Nothing left. <laughs> if it were five, six o'clock, I might keep a little bit of that for myself. But... Okay, so I'm gonna let that start heating up to a boil. We're ready to turn these one turn. And I'll turn it over so we can see. And then we'll hit that other side. Just want that nice crust on the outside. I'm not trying to cook those just yet. I didn't even notice how long that took. I think it was about 10 minutes on the light part. I always pay attention to the start time. I never, I guess we can go back and watch it, but usually about 10 minutes. Our wine's starting to simmer here a little bit. I'm gonna try and get that to a little bit of a boil, reduce it just a little bit before we add the rest of the ingredients. Zoe's enjoying her time out here in the backyard today. <laughs> I don't see her. She's behind it. The wine smells good. If anybody has any questions, feel free to throw them out there. I could be distracted now because I'm kind of at a... Um, somebody missed the seasoning. Oh, yep. Seasoning on, you can do salt, pepper, you can do, uh, I've used Outdoor Home Steak and Roast Rub, and this one is uh, a new favorite of mine, Blue's Hog, bold and beefy. And I believe it's a lot of salt, pepper, yeah, salt, sugar, spices, dehydrated garlic, onion. And that was just on the ribs, and then we have other seasoning that goes into the... Yes. Yeah, seasoning, I've got uh, fresh garlic. Uh, we've got fresh garlic that's gonna go in. I have thyme, parsley, um, oregano, bay leaves. That's all going to go in the finished product here as well. We're starting Rosemary. To Rosemary, yep. Yep, fresh herbs are coming up here soon. 
Okay, so we've got both sides there. We're going to get the front side now. I don't mess with the actual ends. So now the bones are up, and that's the last side to finish. And again, today we're doing red wine braised short ribs. You can certainly smoke these like you would uh, regular ribs, and that is coming up. I believe we have somebody on deck to do some ribs one of these days. You can see I'm really starting to boil pretty good here. And this is thickening up pretty nice there. Just going to reduce that just a little bit, probably about the time those ribs are ready. You can hold quite a few of these. Um, it's just the two of us, so this is going to be enough. You can actually fit quite a few in there. We're just about done. Want to add your tomatoes and garlic? Oh, yeah. Okay, that's thickened up nice. One can of diced tomatoes. These are the Italian style. Like we mentioned before, in today's time, you just take whatever you can get. And then I've got uh, fresh garlic here that we actually smashed. I'm going to start incorporating that in there as well. Ken Brown says it looks delicious. <laughs> Thank you. This is, like I mentioned, this is one of my favorite recipes. I do this a few times a year. All right. Well, that's what we're looking for on the short ribs. I can put them back on there because they're going to cook in the, uh, for plenty of time. And they're getting ready to uh, take a bath in this liquid goodness we have over here for a long time. That's the end of that. That'll shut down. We can use that again the next time. Okay, so I've got everything except for these last few ingredients. At this point in time, I want to move these guys into the liquid. And I like to do this at this point because I want to make sure they're kind of nestled in there. And if you're doing a bunch of them, this can be a little bit of a trick to, to get them all to fit. It's almost like a little puzzle, but this will be with four of them. This is going to be pretty easy. All right, so we're going to Uh, recipe uses fresh oregano. Uh, they were fresh out, so again, <laughs> you take what you can get. So I'm going to add the equivalent of some oregano. I think it was two or three sprigs that you normally do. We've got some fresh parsley. Several sprigs of rosemary. whole lot of time. We all have plenty of time <laughs> on our hands right now, right? This is the one thing you can find plenty of. Just because you stay home doesn't mean you have to stay in the house. Okay, last but not least, this is not as exciting as the wine. Four cups, or in this case the entire box, of beef broth. The nice thing is that then gets, you can see this is the perfect size cooking vessel for a recipe like this. It was never designed for this, but it sure looks like it is. And then I will just kind of incorporate these ingredients into the mix. What we're going to do now is bring that up to a simmer. And I will show you a trick here. So the last part of this recipe, it's going to be 
to bring this back to a boil and then reduce heat uh, reduce heat and do a simmer. So a lot of people, well, how do you reduce heat that fast uh, when we once we get it hot? And I'll show you a trick that we're going to do here. We'll let that uh, we'll let that heat up for a second, and then I'll show you one easy trick that you can actually do that. This will cook for two and a half to three hours at uh, 350 degrees, and uh, without the lid, uh, we could if we wanted to speed it up, we could even put the lid on there. Three minutes. Good news is all the all the work is up front, and then we're gonna we're gonna chill for a while. Well, basically, this is gonna take just a minute to reheat. The effort of saving time, so everybody can enjoy this beautiful day. What you can do, let's say this is in a rolling. I get this to a rolling boil, and I need to shut it down pretty quick. Part of the reason why. Uh, part of the reason why is it's right on top of the coal and it's on top of this uh, cast iron grate that's that's very hot right now. So what I'm going to do is move this off of here. I think I can set it on the table. Looks like we could eat it right now. And then I'm going to grab part of the egg spander where you actually have your what would normally hold the convector. But what it allows me to do is raise grid right over the top. So now this is not a hot surface. It's also further from the charcoal. Make sure you use gloves when you do this, because that pan is hot. And then I can put it right back on here, and that will basically mimic the same thing. And we could put the lid on here if we wanted to, to speed it up like so. Do you not normally put the lid on? I don't. I don't oh. think so. But I might look at the recipe. <laughs> I'll make sure I'll take the lid off. If, actually, I'm going to take the lid off. I think I'm going to wait until it at least gets going. And, yeah. and then I'll go back and look at my recipe and see if it actually does incorporate the lid or not. So, there it is. There's the finished product before it actually cooks. You see, we've got enough liquid there to cover all of the short ribs. They're going to braise now for about two and a half to three hours. So we'll keep an eye on this and try and give maybe a 15 minute notice when we're going to come back live and show you the uh, the reveal. Uh, when we get done with this, it gets put on top of that. That becomes a gravy sauce over the top of some mashed potatoes um, and all kinds of stuff. So we'll have an early dinner here in a little bit. So we'll go ahead and shut this down. Thank you everybody for watching. All right, that was a little bit of a longer video, but we'll see you here in about two and a half, three hours. So enjoy your day until then. See you next time. Are we live? Okay, welcome back everybody. If you tuned in the first, this is the second of two episodes. Uh, we're gonna do the reveal on the red wine braised short rib recipe that we did earlier. I'm a little closer to the camera this time, maybe, maybe too close as far as social distancing is concerned nowadays, but as you can hear in the background, I'm kind of competing with uh, some other noises. We've got lawn mowing, we've got power washing, we've got all kinds of honeydew lists going on in the neighborhood. So. I'll talk as loud as I can to try and help out, but dinner's ready, we're hungry, so we're just gonna roll with this, uh, even though hopefully you can hear me over all the other noise that's going on. So, we've been on for, looks like just over, just over three hours on the uh, short rib recipe. So we're gonna take a look at what we have here. Cruising at 350 degrees, again, for three hours. And I need to back up from the previous video. We talked about, I wasn't quite sure on lid on, lid off. So I went back and looked at the recipe and the lid is supposed to be on for this recipe for the Dutch oven. So uh, just about any Dutch oven, whether it's enamel or whether it's cast iron is going to come with a lid. You want to use the lid on this one uh, for this cook. It was actually on the recipe. So I caught it in time and added that to the, to the so we're going to do the reveal here. You can this out of our way. Okay, so we've got a little over three hours, and the way to test this is I like to take a toothpick and just find one of the pieces of meat like there 
it should go in just like butter. There is absolutely no resistance. Uh, I noticed here earlier when I checked it that there was a bone that was floating. That's a really good sign when it separates from the bone. So all of this meat is, there's a mushroom. So this recipe is done. A really cool feature with this is when it finishes ahead of time, we're actually shooting for about 5.30 on dinner. We've got some other things in the work here. So this can rest. At this point in time, I can take it off in this uh, Dutch oven, put the, keep the lid on it and let it sit. And it's just going to, uh, it's gonna hold for hours. So we're probably 45 minutes away from dinner, but I wanna show you the end product at least of what we ended up here with the short ribs. What I would normally do is remove, I've got my platter here. I would normally take when it comes to, when it's actually dinner time, I'm going to take each one of the short ribs in there and I'd lay them out across this plate and pour some of that uh, goodness over the top. And then as far as, and we can post a picture of the plate when we're done here, we're gonna do some Brussels sprouts with this. Um, we do mashed potatoes. So what we'll do is I'll take the ribs off when it comes time to dinner, put them across this plate. And then I give what's left here, I give what's left here to Shonda who's operating the camera. And then I believe she takes the, she does something to remove the grease that's on top there, floating on top, adds some stuff, makes it a real nice thick gravy. Um, and then it's just a matter of a nice big portion of mashed potatoes that we make. You take the ribs, you take the short ribs, which the bone will just fall off, and you place it on top of that, and then you pour the gravy over the top, your veggies on the side, a nice dinner roll. It's just, it's just unbelievable. I love this meal. So, But I want to at least show you what the end result is, because you saw the short ribs when they went in. Short ribs when they went in. So I'm going to take just a... Ask Dave if he can hear you. The bone just fell off. I don't know if they can hear you or not. Can anybody hear me at all? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> it's either that or let it overcook. So. so there's the meat that comes off of one of the ribs. You can see the bone. I don't know where the bone. It's in there floating somewhere. So this is going to be a hot bite, but... <laughs> I mean, it just, just falls apart. It's almost Somebody, like brisket. Somebody asked three hours at 350, is that what you said? Yep, three hours at 350. And then now it's it's just in there in that hot juice. Um, we'll let that cool down just a little bit before we do our virtual bite. But braised, red wine braised short rib. Again, these were bone on, but the bone's in there somewhere. We could dig around and find it. And then we're gonna make a gravy out of this. We're gonna put this meat over the mashed potatoes, gravy over the top of that, some veggies and a roll to go with it. And then we'll try and do a, are you ready for a hot bite here, Shauna? I'm ready. All right, so we got, being safe here, I got two separate forks. So she's gonna take one with her own fork and then I'll have my own. So right at the Coming camera. In. Oh, oh fail. <laughs> we've got extras. Live video, you gotta love it. All right, let's try this again. Even more noise in the background. This one's got some fat on the outside edge. Mm. There's that fork. Oh my goodness. Not like I need my own fork, but you just... Mm. Nice job. Thank you. And since we're eating this, we're gonna dump that back in the bath there. <laughs> it's just the two of us. You can see each one of these pieces of meat. There's that, I think there's that big chunk. The bone's still on that one. But you can see you got that fresh herb, all the mushrooms, all that's gonna end up on the mashed potatoes and gravy. I'm telling you, this is one of my favorite meals. So again, thank you so much for watching another episode of the Outdoor Home Stay at Home live cooking demonstration. Even though you have to stay out, stay at home doesn't mean you have to stay inside, even when it's noisy outside. Get outside, <laughs> cook something new on the grill. I hope you can hear this. If not, we'll wish you could have, and I'll see you again the next time. Thanks for watching.